In this video, we'll talk about the masculine side, the right side of the body, ways of being such as discipline, rigor, ambition, control also fall under this category. So I would love to get your comments on which chakras do you think are feminine and which are masculine. In the last video, we talked about what can you expect in a person when their feminine sides, the left side of their body, the left nostril called Ida is weak, overactive or balanced. In this video, we'll talk about the masculine side, the right side of the body controlled by the right nostril, controlled by the left brain. What happens when your pingala, the masculine side of your body is either weak, it's balanced or it's overactive. So let's... Regardless of gender, we have both feminine and masculine aspects of who we are. And this applies to our chakra system too. Three of the chakras in our human body are masculine nature and three are feminine nature. And one, I'll give you a hint, one, the top chakra, Sahasahara, is neutral in nature. So I would love to get your comments on which chakras do you think are feminine and which are masculine. See, logic, planning and structure fall under the masculine. Ways of being such as discipline, rigor, ambition, control also fall under this category. The masculine supports the growth of a balanced ego, financial stability, shelter and organization. So it's a very, very important aspect of who we are. So today we're going to talk about what happens to the person, what are the characteristics if your masculine is weak in nature. Now think about masculine is weak in nature means your solar plexus, which is your masculine chakra. That's a hint. So when your solar plexus is weak then first thing that's going to happen is the fire element, which is 4% in your body. See, 70% of your body is water, 14% is earth, and 4% roughly is fire. So if the fire element goes to 3% or 3.5%, then it's weak. And if it goes to 4.5%, 5 sometimes 5.5%, then it's overactive. So we'll talk about both the aspects here. So when the fire element is weak, the first thing is going to happen is that you're going to have indigestion. Your stomach is not going to have enough power to digest the food. And that affects the whole quality of your life. There's a sister science to yoga called Ayurveda. And that's one of the Vedas. So Ayu means your life, age. So basically longevity and Vedas means the science. So the science of longevity. And it describes people in three main different categories, depending on what element of um, earth, water, fire, uh, air, or space is more active, more predominant in that person. And we'll do a different video, next video, and we'll do a quiz on which element, which dosha you are. But in this video, I want to just mention that in Ayurveda, they talk about seven dhatus, that our body is a combination of seven dhatus, seven elements. And when your pingla, the masculine side of your body, the right nostril, is weak, that means the seven dhatus are weak. So in, in summary, the whole constitution of your physical body is weak. Second one, low self-esteem with the lack of fire element in the body, it over time results into low self-esteem. Third, low willpower. See, solar plexus is all about your ego, your willpower. And if solar plexus is weak, it's the warehouse of energy. Then the ability to do things, the ability to do what you said you're going to do is going to be missing. So that's the willpower. So anyone who has less prana flowing through the right side of the body is going to suffer from low self-esteem and slow willpower. Fourth, one would suffer from fear and anxiety. Fear from what? Fear of being able to provide for yourself food, water, and shelter. Basic needs. So 
that would result to anxiety of the unknown what's going to happen tomorrow am i going to be able to take care of myself tomorrow so now we'll talk about what happens when there is too much energy in the right side of your body so what happens when you have too much heat flowing through your masculine side of the body when you have too much prana how does that come to be when you're breathing in and breathing out from the right nostril for prolonged periods of time and it's stimulating continuously your left brain. And when that happens, you have overactive digestion. That's bad too. So because when you eat something, it's gonna, the fire, the extra fire is gonna literally burn the food and it's not gonna show up in your body. The nutrition is gonna be burnt. So there is a lot of people who eat a lot but it doesn't show up in their body because they have over metabolism and that can happen when your right side the pingla is overactive second this can lead to an overblown ego now that's dangerous because these people don't really know when they are crossing the line when they're crossing a line in a relationship in friendship or any areas of life they really have no idea because they're too much consumed in the masculine side they're too much consumed in the way they do things third one one tends to become self-righteous and it's very difficult to be in a relationship with a person who has a very active pingla the masculine side because they'll always be right in a relationship and there is no room for you to express anything but how we, how they think fourth these people tend to be narcissist because there's so much emphasis on themselves because the fire element is so active that sometimes they become blind to anybody else's perspective and if you're in a relationship with a narcissist they only um, consider you important in terms of what you bring to them if you're meeting their needs then they'll be nice to you otherwise they'll flip fifth this can create addictions, addictions to sex, addictions to alcohol, addiction to gambling and sometimes drugs. Now, if you have an overactive masculine side, it can create addictions for your body, uh, for your psyche, because you are all, almost always used to getting what you want because you force your way always to get what you want. And that's not healthy when you don't get what you want that's when everything falls apart. This addiction is a little different from addiction we talked about in the feminine side. In the feminine side, if you're addicted, you somehow uh, coerce your way or manipulate the situation to get what you want. But this one, you will almost force your way to get what you want. So it's a little more tricky and a little more detrimental to the society. So it's very important to balance this. Sixth, these people feel overconfident and they almost feel entitled. They feel entitled in sex, they feel entitled in friendship, and they consider they, their school of thought is that people owe them favors. So that's how they operate by default. Seventh, they have a tendency to become loners. Why? Because we live in a society where if someone has a lot of anger, and they want to express the anger they can't really go punch anybody in the street so what they have to do is they have to withdraw themselves they withdraw themselves in isolation because they cannot that's the only way they can handle the situation so it's not the same isolation as a monk for example would do and go meditate in isolation this is a different negative connotation to isolation so these people need to be balanced and the last one, they have excess heat in the body because when there is too much energy going in your masculine side, the right side of the body, it's going to create too much heat. So now let's talk about what if the masculine side is balanced. So you remember that you cannot really balance the masculine with the feminine. That's how we are used to thinking. But in yoga, in kundalini yoga, what we want to do is we want to bring both the masculine, the pingla side, and the feminine, the ida side, both to balance, and then they can complement each other. 
Just like we say a man and a woman in a relationship should be both complete and then they should get into a relationship. That's when the magic would happen. Same way, there are some chakras which are related to the masculine side. Unless the masculine side, the pingla, is uh, balanced, you're going to not go up on those chakras. Same way, there are some chakras which are associated with the feminine, ida side. Unless you have the ida, feminine side, balance in your body, you're not going to go up through the chakras. So, the balance happens when both the ida and pingla are balanced. In the next video, we'll talk about the techniques on how we're going to balance both the ida, the feminine side, and the pingla, the masculine side. But let's just briefly talk about what happens when your pingla, the masculine side, is balanced in you. See, if your fire is balanced, let's say it's 4%, you're going to have perfect digestion, which is going to ultimately lead to a perfect body. So, the seven elements, dhatus we talked about in uh, from Ayurveda's perspective, you're going to have all those seven elements, uh, dhatus, balance in the body, which means your bones are going to be strong, you're going to have very good blood plasma, you're going to have very good tissues, muscles, and your reproductive system is going to be very uh, good. Apart from that, you're going to have a very, very strong memory. You're going to have a very strong preaching voice, which means you're going to be a very good teacher. And uh, when you express something, people are going to listen to you. You're going to be able to somehow communicate what you're thinking very effectively to people around you. So that's some of the aspects of your masculine side balanced. So I hope you got some value out of this uh, video. And um, if you're watching this video and if you haven't subscribed, I would really encourage you, I would really request you to subscribe. When you subscribe to the video, all you're saying is that you want to be notified when the next video is released. So let's continue going deeper into the aspects of who we are through Swara Yoga and Kundalini's perspective. My name is Abhi and I help you create the life by design. Namaste and peace.